Hey guys, what's going on? Look what I got right here. This is the 8mm and Super 8 film digitizer uh, that I purchased about two weeks ago. I've been playing with this. I actually have been pretty impressed with this product for what I paid for it. Uh, it. It scans frame by frame and digitizes your old home movies. And it's doing me pretty well. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. That's what this video is going to be about today. I'm going to share with you my experiences with this particular device go over with you uh, some of the best settings to choose from. Uh, one of the things that I really like about it is that you can more or less just set the thing and hit go and then two hours later you have a finished reel. It's been digitized. I've seen three different versions of this. There's the two Wolverine variants. There's the 720p Wolverine and then there's the slightly more expensive 1080p Wolverine. This one is sort of like the unbranded version of those. It actually, it looks very similar in design to the Wolverines. In fact, this box even has like a picture of one of the Wolverine ones on it. But I don't know if like this is made by the same company or what, uh, but this one claims to also do 1080p. Uh, and for the price, you can't go wrong. So unfortunately I don't have one of the Wolverine ones to play with, however, I am going to go over with you this particular one. We're going to go through some of the settings. We're going to determine uh, how to get the best results with exposure and sharpness and some, some other things I've figured out that you can, may need to do in your post to get the frame rate to play back at the correct speed. Okay, so let's get going. So this is the main film scanning unit uh, and all the accessories that it comes with. It does come with a 5-inch reel which will hold about 16 to 18 minutes of film. So if you have reels larger than this, uh, you may have to splice those down in order to use this, uh, this film digitizer. Uh, it comes with this cleaning wipe. I have not actually used this yet, but this is for cleaning the little film tray right here where the film goes through. I will probably use that in the future because film does tend to get dirty. Um, it comes with a USB mini cable. Uh, this is for transferring your files off onto like say a laptop and this can be useful if you don't want to remove the SD card each time. When you remove the SD card the unit reboots so this can actually be useful for you uh, if you want to stop and then restart your film. This is the uh, composite TV out cable. Uh, I have not actually used this, uh, but whenever you play back on the little LCD screen, it does play back at 30 frames per second. Uh, keep in mind that Super 8 and 8 millimeter are uh, 18 frames per second and 16 frames per second respectively on the capture. So when you're playing back at 30, it's going to be really fast. So I'm not sure how useful this really is. Of course, this is the 12 volt AC adapter that you need to power the device, uh, the manual. Watch this video, you're really not going to need to get into here too much. It does come with a 32 gigabyte SD card that pops right in the back. Two step up reel inserts to allow you to use reels that have uh, the larger holes uh, that you can put um, onto here if you need them. Okay, so this is a reel that I have from 1958 that has a bit of a snowstorm in it. At the beginning, I thought that would be kind of interesting to share. And I want to show you how to go ahead and thread this up. So uh, you'll notice here that there's a solid white line that runs the full length here. So this solid line is uh, for recording, and the uh, dash or dotted line is actually for rewinding. So uh, just pay attention to that. If your reels are rewound correctly, you should notice that the sprockets will be closest to the unit itself. So let's go ahead and mount this onto the unit. And there we go. And then we should just be able to pull this leader across. You push this to the left, it will open the film tray. You can just kind of let it go right through there for now and then thread it thread it just like that and then into the take up reel now you do have to pay attention to the notch on the take up reel so then uh, the next step uh, once you have your film threaded is to actually just turn the device on uh, the device will come on 
And it's going to advance the film just a little bit. That happens each time you turn it on. It will happen if you remove the SD card and the device reboots. So I'm going to just go ahead and manually advance the film until we get to our first frame. Okay, so, so there are these little clips in here, right here and right here, that the film has to be under. And I uh, just pull the film up to that first frame. Basically, it, it's like one third of the way across. The frame will be right in the middle of that tray. There's a little gear mechanism over here. And that's actually what advances the frame by frame. And so that'll take care of itself. It is important it, that you have this in the right selection. So I'm using eight millimeter film. Of course, if this was super eight, we would slide this over to super eight. If you make the mistake of selecting the wrong one, your film will not advance. Uh, so if you run into that, you probably have selected the wrong one. It's pretty easy to make the mistake. Basically the super eight has a smaller sprocket than the, than the eight millimeter. Uh, that's the main way that you can tell them apart. So once you have this lined up correctly, you just close your film tray. It should go pretty easy. Really the only thing next to do is hit your start stop button. Uh, do you wanna go over some of the settings that I have determined to be the best? So if you hit menu, you can go through your settings. There's the playback setting, this will play it back. However, it plays back from the SD card at faster than normal rate. Fast forward is actually how you rewind at the end and I will be showing you that. EV is your exposure. So I'm gonna say okay to that. I have found that exposing at negative 0.5 works the best for me. I have some film that was shot in some really bright light. And basically what happens with that film is it ends up looking yellow. I would suggest you underexpose uh, by negative 0.5. You can play around with these. I tend to do the entire reel with the same exposure. If I want to re-expose, I'll just go back and do the entire reel again at a different exposure because I feel it's difficult to start and stop. You can do that, but that's outside the scope of this video. Frame adjust is for getting your centering. I leave that at the defaults. For sharpness, I went from the default, which is medium, down to low. I found that, that gave me a better result. It helped reduce the film grain a, a little bit. So, and then there's, of course, there's language. So we're gonna go back to the uh, main screen. You can see here, and all you really have to do once you've dialed in your settings is say start stop. At this point, it's going to ask you what size reel you have. And since this is a larger reel, it's a five inch reel, we're gonna select the five inch reel setting. Really all this does is determines a countdown. And generally my reels were like overloaded. So generally this hits zero before, uh, but it's okay. This thing will keep on going. It has a way to detect that it's at the end. And uh, if you forget about it, it will shut itself down on its own. But anyways, without further ado, let's push this button and uh, get this thing started. So right here, you can see that we're in frame. This is the snowstorm I was talking about. It's interesting to actually watch this. Uh, I have watched tire films. However, it is only doing this at two frames per second. So you're gonna be here for quite some time. Uh, also, I find that this tends to have more of blue, a blue hue to it than your final end result. Don't worry about that. Just wait and look at your footage at the end. Okay, so the scanner has finished digitizing the entire reel and I've imported it into my computer. And remember how I was telling you about the frame rates? So at this point, we need to change the frame rate. Now I use Adobe Premiere. The way I do this is I right click the file, I go to modify, interpret footage, and you can see right here that this is 30 frames per second. I now select assume this frame rate and I'll type in 16 frames per second and select okay. If this had been super eight, I would select 18 frames per second. And if your software doesn't support this, just slow the footage down to 60% for super eight or 53.3% for eight millimeter. It's time to check out this footage and see how this film scanner performed. Okay, so this is that snowstorm I was talking to you about. And you can see this film's pretty dirty. But overall, I think this doesn't look too bad. Uh, you will notice, I'm just gonna pause this here. 
You notice over here in this area towards the the top of the screen that you do kind of notice a little bit of grain. Now, of course, eight millimeter film does have grain in it, but I'm gonna keep playing it and just I'll let you decide for yourself what you think of the footage. Let me know in the comments down below what, what you think of this quality. Uh, is this truly 1080p? Yeah, this footage is, is from the late 50s. The big snowstorm. You can see, uh, see these guys are checking it out. Here in a minute, they're going to have a snowball fight. There we go. So, the difficulty I'm having here is how do I how do I really compare this with what it should actually look like? And my dad happened to pick this up at a yard sale. This is what is called the complete video transfer system. I actually used an iPhone 11 Pro to capture using this device and a projector. So it's a different technique. It actually captures it in real time. I, I was capturing it around 16 frames per second. Okay, so here we go, comparing the film digitizer to the video transfer system. So, so right away, you can kind of tell that it looks a little more like it's cooler, a cooler temperature. I will say you don't see as much film grain uh, as in, in the transfer system as you do with the digitizer. But I, this just doesn't look that much clearer to me. The other thing too uh, that you, if you watch here on the video transfer system side, you'll notice there's a flicker and that's really hard to get rid of whenever you film or you record film from another device. Also, I, I tend, to, tend to see a lot more scratches on this side, on the video transfer system side. Definitely looks a little brighter in the shadows. But I mean, they're they're pretty close. I mean, if you I mean, as far as like sharpness and quality, I mean, I I feel like it's doing a pretty good job. I actually captured the video transfer system with 4K resolution try to get as much sharpness as possible out of it. I feel like it's slightly sharper than the film digitizer. Okay, so here comes this old car up up through this between these two snow banks. Definitely see the scratches a lot more prominently on the video transfer side. So I'm gonna stop. So th these tend to get out of sync a little bit. It's it's hard to keep them in sync because the one is frame by frame. It's exact, and then this side over here depends on the speed of the projector, which runs by a motor. So it tends to move in and out a little bit. I, I tried to align the entire reel from end to end, and at times they get out of sync. But just have a look at that license plate. I don't know if you can tell if those look any different. You know, one of the positive things about the film digitizer is you don't have that flicker. And the scratches are definitely less prominent. There was a splice. Let me back up and see if I can see that splice. You see the splice right there on the film digitizer side. I don't know if we can back up and there's the splice on this side. So we're a little bit out of sync here, but not too much. Another snowball battle going on. I 
Also, if you notice right there on the film transfer side, you can tend to see the bulb in the center. Uh, that's one of the things about older projectors is the lighting wasn't very even. So this thing accomplishes that well. I mean, the lighting is very even across the entire frame. You can see that scratch. Look at how much more prominent it is on the video transfer side. So I don't know if they're correcting that with software or what, but, it, you know, I, I get the feeling that the film digitizer, just because it lacks some sharpness, uh, and if you tend to look at the, look at it really closely, you'll notice that that film grain, I feel like the, the data compression they're using, it might just not be that high. Uh, and it's just not really getting all the details. But at the same time, that actually might have the effect of reducing the scratches. But that is just a theory. I mean, I don't really know what this thing's doing internally. Pretty neat, though. Let me know down in the comments what you think of these two methods. Are they, is this thing doing a good enough job? Would you buy one of these? You think it's worth it? Here comes this big snowblower. Look at the telephone poles back in those days. They, they carried a lot of wires because each phone call had its own wire. It's really neat. I'm gonna kind of jump ahead here and see if we can find some other footage. Okay, here's another, this is my grandmother and I think my aunt. You'll notice here on the video transfer side that it is just way underexposed. That's another interesting thing about this film scanner is that you can control the exposure, but it also seems like it does a little bit on its own with the exposure. Like if it's way out of adjustment, it'll uh, kind of keep the exposure in check. Yeah, the lighting is just much more even and more balanced for sure with with the film digitizer i would have to say that this thing does a pretty good job now that we've finished our capture the next step is to just rewind it uh, it's pretty easy you just take this reel off and you're gonna flip it like this and put it on this side same goes with this reel pull this reel off flip it like this put it on this side then Place the reel, and this time you're going to just run under these two here. Uh, follow the dashed lines, and hopefully I can get this in there. Just kind of give it a little help. All right, so then uh, we want to go through our menu, go to fast forward. Now again, this is rewinding, but since we put this over here. Uh, technically, the fast forward is the rewind, so we just say OK. Move down to the yes. It's going to tell us to please take away film, which I think just means remove your hands, get your hands out of the way. And there you go. All right, once we get to this point, uh, we just hold the start stop button and we're good to go. All right, that's going to be it for this one. I do want to give you one last piece of advice. If you do pick up one of these, and remember, the link's down in the description, make sure that you have in your possession a splicer. At some point, some film's going to break on you, and it's going to be a pain if you don't have a way to splice the film back together. I ran into this one reel. It was, like, really brittle. It broke on me a few times. doesn't always happen, but occasionally you'll run into one of these reels. Uh, just go ahead and pick one up you'll thank me later. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. I really appreciate you watch this all the way to the end. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that bell. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.